In this HVAC training video, we're going over aluminum coil repair and we're going over the different types of rods, the different types of torch setups, and also the different types of coils that you may run into in the field. Fixing aluminum is actually a lot easier than it used to be when we had copper and aluminum together. The copper needed a lot more heat as we tried to repair it, and the aluminum doesn't need as much heat, and all being that same material, actually, in my opinion, makes it a lot easier to do that repair. Yeah, so the melting point of these rods and also of the aluminum tubing is a lot lower than the copper tubing. And so a lot of times we had leaks right here where we had the copper tubing going right through the galvanized tin. So we had a dissimilar metal connection as well as maybe acidity in the system was wearing down the inner walls of the tubing and making it thinner. And so we would have refrigerant leaks in here, we would have refrigerant leaks in the copper tubing in here, and so on. When we also had to do repairs before with the copper tubing, we had to use a lot more heat, which led to copper oxides building up or oxidation inside the tubing, and we had to flow nitrogen to prevent that. Because we're using a lower amount of heat to fix the aluminum, we don't have to worry about the copper oxidation. However, it's still a great idea to flow nitrogen so that we don't end up with moisture contamination in the coils. And now that we have A2O refrigerants, we definitely want to flow nitrogen while doing any repairs because we want to make sure there's no oxygen in there. So any possible remaining refrigerant won't have a possibility of igniting. So these uh, coils nowadays with the indoor coils, a lot of them are aluminum tube and aluminum fin, and you may run into also the micro channel coils, uh, which are a little different. And so, uh, they are aluminum with the tubing. The tubing is like a squished down, almost like rectangular type of tubing, and then you have the fins in between them. And so this one's a little bit harder to repair because when you're melting your rod, it might get sucked in and kind of close it off. So you gotta be real careful to just kind of touch it and get it done in order to fix it. And these ones are a little bit easier. Uh, so you might also run into the microchannel coil on the outdoor units as well. So. You know, uh, this is really what we're getting into now. We have the aluminum plates right here as well. So we got aluminum plates, aluminum tubes, and aluminum U-joints. And so you really want to know how to use these rods. As you can see right here, we just have like a little cap, uh, but you could just use tape or there's different uh, tools you can use in order to just attach onto one side, either right here on this side or on this side in order to flow the nitrogen through. When we're soldering, we do have to use a flux. Now we have two options. One is I can use a flux like this where we apply it first, we heat it up, and then we apply a solid rod. The other option is using one that's all in one. This one actually has the flux inside of the rod, so it's one less step. Now it's your preference which one you prefer, but we're gonna show you both. I'm gonna fix this hole using the air settling torch, separate flux, and the solid core aluminum soldering rod. First, we gotta make sure we clean this really good. This is gonna be a stainless steel brush, and we're cleaning that copper so it's, the aluminum, so it's prepped and ready to go. And that's all it takes. So because aluminum has a low melting temperature, we don't wanna leave the torch on there too long. We control the heat, adding more heat with it closer, reducing it by bringing it out farther. But if we add too much heat too fast, you'll end up melting all of this aluminum off. So what I'm doing is I heat it up enough to start melting that flux, and then I'm just simply adding in this the uh, rod, so that way once the rod starts to melt, I can pull this torch back and I have just the right amount of heat to do that. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it down, you'll find that it's pretty easy. Now I'm gonna fix this hole using air acetylene, but this time I'm using the rod that has the flux built into it all in one. I'm gonna clean this with a stainless steel brush to get the aluminum prepped and ready to go. And I did a little bit excessive on there, I got a little bit too much on, but that's all it takes. It's nice and quick, easy to do, all in one step. Now we're gonna fix this joint, which we've already prepped by cleaning it with the needle nose pliers. 
But we're still gonna use our stainless steel brush and prep that aluminum. And I'm gonna use the all-in-one rod for this one. And for this example, we're gonna use a propane torch. Now you can see how when we did this, it heated up and melted those aluminum fins. You are going to lose efficiency with your coil doing that. But in some cases, we don't have a lot of options. We do need to communicate with our customer, but you can see that we were able to fix this leak inside this coil. I wanna point out that this is a large heat sink and you may not be able to get this hot enough with a traditional a propane torch possibly, and you could certainly use an aerosoline torch but you could simply just switch out the head for one that has a higher capacity. So I just wanna show you the difference between these two flames. So as you can see, this one right here produces a, a larger flame, and so it's gonna produce more heat. So I'm gonna use this tip with the propane torch to fix this leak with a solder weld solid rod. Now it's important to note that this aluminum tubing right here is gonna melt at about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the solder weld rod melts at about 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So you don't wanna just keep the torch in one spot and potentially melt this tubing. You kinda of wanna move it around a little bit, uh, but you just gotta get this tubing hot enough to chemically bond with the rod. So it's as simple as that. In this example, I'm gonna use a propane torch with the all-in-one rod. And so we have to fix this little spot right here. And so we're gonna use our stainless steel brush in order to clean this up. And that's all we need to do. So once you do get it to start to melt, you can heat the torch around it a little bit to just try to spread it out, uh, but that's how you do it. Here's another product that has very similar properties to the rod that we were using in the previous examples. And so this one's a flux core rod, just like this one, and it has a similar melting point of between seven to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So this would work as well. Now we're gonna fix this tiny little hole on the microchannel coil. And the thing to realize about microchannel coils is there's about 25 to 30 tiny little holes across here. And this coil has about, say, 30 or 40 across. So it's about a thousand little holes. So we're gonna be filling one of those and in order to fix the refrigerant leak on this. So I'm gonna use the example of the propane torch uh, with the all-in-one rod for this application. And so here we go. We'll clean this first right here, just like this. So that has adhered, and so that leak is fixed. And so it is possible, you just gotta realize you'll be closing off one of the tiny, tiny little channels. So now you can see it absolutely is possible. We highly recommend that you practice this ahead of time so you can build these skills before you need them. Yeah, so these evaporator coils are getting more and more expensive, and especially if you end up having to buy a new one for say R32 or R454B, that also includes that sensor. And so the costs are just getting higher and higher and we do need to get the customer up and running in case of an emergency. So it's definitely possible. And if you wanna learn more about HVEC, also make sure to check out our second edition, Refrigerant Charging is Surface Procedures for Air Conditioning book, which we have available over at acsurfacetech.com and also on Amazon and True Tech Tools. So if you wanna learn more about Ty Brandeman and, and what he's up to, make sure to check out him on all the social media channels for love to HVAC.